Right, so we're a couple of days in, new chains fitted. It's only been around the block. So let's take it out for a proper ride. It feels so smooth already, even just pushing the bike. Before the bike felt really heavy. It wasn't. It was the chain, the C's chain. What was making it feel heavy. Right. Let's see how this feels. Oh, no noise, no slapping. Feels so nice. Got the mesh jacket on today. Got the summer gloves on. I think it's going to rain later, so I thought I'll get out now. Give it a try. Oh, I feel so much better, so much quiet. Oh, that's a massive difference. You don't realise that, you do you? Old chains. I knew I was having problems with it. Oh, I can't wait to have this mesh jacket in France. We've not got long for that now. So, we're not long back after our Ellen Valley weekend. And that was absolutely fantastic weekend. That was thank you everybody what came. You made it an amazing weekend. The videos are coming out absolutely brilliant. Um, I think I'm on episode four now. I think we're just about to leave the arches and do the Ellen Valley route. We've just done Lynbrian. Had a few audio problems. Goose, it seems his mic wasn't plugged in. So I've got footage from Goose, but I've got no audio. So the videos, I've had to mainly use a lot of music with it. Because I've only got myself talking. Davros's 360 and Piggy's 360 footage is phenomenal, as usual and Piggy's drone footage I don't think I need to even talk about that it speaks for itself well it feels a lot smoother feels lovely actually And I've noticed it more about at this speed. When you're just crawling along at low revs. That's what I was getting the chain hitting and slapping. So it must have been going slow enough that I reckon it was bouncing on them two C's links. Well I think where the faster you was going, I bet the sprocket was forcing the chain links round. Yeah, I can see over there on the horizon it's gonna it's gonna hoof it down later. So we're just starting to make plans now for the Vernu weekend in September, 9th and 10th of September. That's a similar one, it's kind of an hundred mile loop route we do. It's absolutely brilliant. Everyone loves that one as well. And that's the one where we're gonna be doing our weekenders now. We'll be free I'll say that again will be free food and free drink we are buying all the catering equipment all the griddles all the barbecue stuff we'll be buying all the food so all you pay is your camping ticket which is 30 pound for the weekend we was looking at providing dinner as well to take out on the road but that wasn't down to the cost that was down to just the logistics of it that'd be an absolute nightmare so if there's 60, 70 of us, you know, none of us, none of us have got time to be making 70 sandwiches. So, dinner, we will leave to sort yourself. Get a pasty or summit from the petrol station on the way. But yeah, but breakfast and the evening meals will be provided by us. Tea, coffee, cold drinks, water. And I think what we will do is, when we get back from the road, I think we'll buy everybody... We'll get everybody a beer, I think. So we can have a toast, we'll raise a drink. 
and what we're going to do is we're going to try and keep it oh well thank you sir we're going to offer the weekenders to our patreon members first so patreon members will get first digs a book in the campsite and then whatever's left over we'll put them put out to the public So we're going to look after our Patreons first. The Patreons, all the money that goes into the Patreons goes into the weekends. Anything we need to buy, any, I mean we get prizes donated to us, but any prizes we buy, like the t-shirts and that, we don't take any of the Patreon money ourselves. That was always our mission from the beginning. We do this because it's a hobby, it's something we like. We're not doing this to earn money so not a penny what gets donated what gets sent in what is in the patreon what goes into any gofundme pages not a penny will go in our pockets it will all go into the weekends for you we don't want your money we've got jobs and as I said we don't do this for the money Hats off to those that do motor vlog full time, because that is one hell of a mission that is. And obviously you do need to earn that money, that's your wage, but we don't. We're not in it for the money, we never have been, we don't want to be. I think once money comes into it, I think for me, would I think it changes what your objective is. And what you do it, so we, I don't want to get to that stage, I'm not interested in it. You're never going to be rich from motor vlogging, so I don't intend to start trying to be. But we love it, we do it because we love it. And that's it, seeing them weekenders, seeing everybody, meeting everybody. That's what it's about. That's why we do it. And we're going to try and keep our weekenders. We're not going to go stupid in size. 60, 70 is, is enough. We're going to, that's what we're going to keep to. 60, 70 in a convoy. Around some of these Welsh roads. And that is... That's all we need. We don't need anything bigger than that. And our weekenders, that's what we want to focus on. Our weekenders, we want it to be about the ride. It's not about the camping or... Yeah, we have a laugh around the campsite, but our focus is we're there to ride. So that's what we're going to stick to. It's what works for us. It's what we like. We enjoy it. Those who come with us seem to enjoy it. So we're not going to change it. That's our theme. That's what we'll stick to. And again, we was blessed with the glorious weather. We couldn't have picked it better. I've got to say, this bike feels lovely. So Vermwe 2022. I think so far we're up to about 54. I think so, it's nearly sold out, so there's not many left. We've got the luxury log cabins, there. all those have been taken. Those are all booked out, there's none of them any available. But there's a couple of camping pitches left. And we're not long now off our France tour, that's only got to be, what, six, seven weeks away? Before we head over there. Quite looking forward to that. So the tour we are doing this year is the one we were meant to do last year. We didn't get over there because of Covid, so we did the South Coast tour instead. And... I mean, everything was picked, the routes, so... Instead of starting fresh, we've just decided to use last year's tour as this year's so I've now got my new products from Autobright my chain and sprocket degreaser and my mega bush kit so hopefully I can keep this chain and sprocket in tip top condition it's my own fault I did neglect the chain I'd never cleaned it anywhere near as much as what I should have so I suppose the condition of it and the link season 
probably was my fault. I've got suspicions. It was halfway there when I brought the bike. Because I noticed from the beginning I seemed to have kept having to adjust the chain. But I never really looked into it. So I think the chain was probably half baked when I got the bike. I think my lack of maintenance schedule didn't help it. But I'm all clean, I'm new, I'm fresh. Now I've got the proper brushes and the proper cleaning solutions. It should be in tip top condition. Yeah, you can tell the difference straight away. Normally there, I'd get a massive slap if I pulled off. But I have noticed um, I did notice it on the audio on the Alavadi weekend when I was listening back to my camera. I'm picking up a squeak. A tiny little squeak. I don't know if it's there now. I can't hear it in my helmet, but I could hear it on the audio. So I don't know if it's the camera here squeaking against my helmet or if I've got something squeaking here. It's a tiny little squeak in the background. I think I just heard it, so uh, I'll see if I pick it up. Might have a squeaky break. Well, no, that's it, because I wasn't braking at the time. I could hear it, so there's so much squeaking. That's it. Let's head away from the dark clouds. And I've been in two minds about changing this VFR. I keep looking at other bikes. Since having to go on that CB500 and Goose's V-Strom, you know, that's a completely different position. I keep thinking, right, yeah, I need a more upright bike. And then I get on the VFR, and every time I get on, I start thinking, this is such a good bike. So I think the only chance I'm thinking is if another bike did appear on the scene, it was if could afford to have another bike, two bikes. I don't think I'm going to get rid of this VFR. It's too good. Goose went on it the other day. He's not really been on this and he, he was quite surprised at how smooth it was and what a comfortable position it was. Which it is actually. I'd say the only niggle I get on this bike long distance is my knees. My knees ache. Nothing else aches. My shoulders, my wrists, nothing. My neck. Just my knees. So I think you can get lower, lower pegs. I don't know, I might try that. Yeah, I'll just find long distance on motorway. My knees ache. But apart from that, it's a lovely bike. I love it. I've not got anything planned to talk about today. You can probably tell I'm waffling on. Well, I've got a free hour before I've got to Trent to his swimming lesson. So I thought I'd just come and... Just come and try this chain out. I can hear, I heard a squeak then. It's like a tiny little mouse squeak. something here. I can hear it, it's almost at the front of the bike. So yeah, on the Ellen Valley too, we did have, I did have Davros's uh, audio, which he's, he's done that modification where you split into the cardo and you pull a feed into your camera so it picks up the audio recorded on there, but I've got to say, it is absolutely dreadful, the audio quality. 
nothing to do with Davros. Davros has done an amazing job. I think he's put a few resistors in there as well to stop to stop it being as bad as what it is. But yeah, I can't use that audio. It's, it's too bad. It just sounds like you're in a tin can, and I think with wind noise and that going and the sound of the bikes, that it's no, it just makes my ears bleed. I'd rather just not have any audio. If I, so. And I think that's purely down to, I don't think it's the Cardo system, I don't think it's the camera. And it's definitely not uh, Davros's wiring, it's none of that, that's not the problem. I think the problem is, is it probably, no, probably is the Cardo, it's the microphone, the Cardo microphone. And I think how the software works, the firmware software, whatever is in the Cardo, is it's got amazing wind cancellation, the Cardos have, so obviously if you're not talking, it cuts the mics out. Now I know on my Final Cut Pro software, if I if I use one of the little plugins, which is a background noise remover, and I tweak it too much, it has exactly the same effect of what the Cardo sound like recorded. In other words, it's that sensitive and that strong, it makes you sound like you're in a tin can. It's just trying to remove all the background noise, so it, it changes, slightly changes the pitch of your voice. And it's not a good sound. It's a brilliant idea, because obviously, you know, you could have a conversation of a ride and only have to have one camera on. Although it's nice to have other cameras for different angles, but, you know, it wouldn't be so important then to be so strict with the synchronisation of the audio, but how it is at the minute, that's unbearable. I can't use that. And Davros, he was going to do the modification to my card, and I said, don't, don't bother, I'll never use it. I'll never use audio that bad, so... I, mean, I don't know if you can switch off the wind noise cancellation on a car, but if you did, obviously, you're just going to get... Like with us, if you've got 12 of you in the group, and there's no wind cancellation on the microphones, you're going to be picking up all 12 microphones' wind noise. So again then, you're going to be in an even worse position. You'd have audio... I'll just be peaking that much with wind noise and no I don't think I don't think there's a definite solution out there for it it's far easier well no it's not easier but it's far better to have each individual camera's audio which I can individually change the EQ on you know it all depends on the helmet their rider position you know, some people get more wind noise than others, so it's far easier to tweak each one individually. Takes a bit longer at the beginning, but once I've done the entire timeline, it's set. Now is my time right on the bike? I don't know. if these videos are any good of just random waffling does anybody want to watch it is anybody interested I don't know it just seems when I get on the bike it just seems an automatic response now to switch the camera on I think I'm kind of trained now that I think it would be odd actually now I've got used to riding and talking, I think it'd be... I think I would struggle just to ride and not talk. Maybe I should try it. That's what I had to do years ago, before I met the Gooster. Obviously it was just me on my own then on the bike, I never used to go out with anybody. Obviously back then there wasn't no intercoms on talking, early 90s. So, I had no music or nothing. Another thing I can't be doing with, I can't be doing with these Cardo speakers in the helmet. That just drives me stupid. 
Uh, I, um, I much prefer my in-ear earphones because it acts as earplugs as well, it gets rid of the wind noise. And plus if we're on a dual carriageway anywhere and someone's talking, you can hear everybody go, what? What? What did you say? Say it again, because they can't hear over the wind noise. Where me, I can hear it perfect every time. The only thing is I can't hear sometimes is how loud I'm talking. Because my ears are plugged up. So what's my plans for France? I've thought about my luggage, what we're going to do. So what we're doing is, oh shh, oh, I wasn't prepared for that one. We are doing, we get the tunnel over to Calais and then Calais we're working our way down to Limoges into Orador Saglan and then all the way back up. So we're doing like a big V. So each day we're going to be driving to the next location. So each night we're in a different hotel. I think it's only the day we go to see the massacred village, we're, we're there for two days. But every other day we're in a different hotel. So, I'm going to take my hard luggage, take my top box. But I did this when we went to Normandy, I took far too much than I needed. So what I think I'm going to do is my panniers, I'm going to have my clothes in. And my shoes. To know stuff like that hoodie flip-flops in case it's warm and then in the other pan you probably have you know like toiletries and the other little bits and pieces and then I'll keep them in the pan your bags so when we get to an hotel I mean some of the hotels we might be on the fourth floor so instead of us well I don't know if the others are doing it but this is my plan instead of me carrying the luggage, the panniers upstairs, I'm going to leave the panniers on the bike and I'm just going to carry the pannier bags. So I'll have two bags, one out of each pannier. Top box, I'm going to leave it empty. All I'm going to have in the top box is my waterproofs, in case we have rain. And then obviously when we get to an hotel, I'm going to put my helmet and my gloves in the top box, leave them on the bike. I'm not carrying it all up there with me. They can stay on the bike. I'm just going to take my pannier bags and my trousers. I'm just going to take up to the hotel room, what I need in the hotel room. I'm not going to take a load of clothes, just a couple of baby shorts, a pair of jeans, some trainers, a couple of t-shirts. If things are that bad and we want out of clothes, you can just buy a cheap t-shirt there with something and just throw it in the bin when you're done with it. So, I know we've got Space Boy Roy and Davos, they've been stressing a little bit. It's the first time for them, but um, no, I'm not going to bother. If there's anything that urgent I need, we'll just go out to buy it while we're there. Just going to take the essentials. As I said, breakfast, dinner, and evening food and drinks. We're going to be buying wire room out because we're going to be on the road every day, all day. So it's minimal. Minimal is all I'm taking, and minimal is all I need. We're going to get one of those great big long wires, those bike chain wires, which I think you can get it through. I think six or seven bikes. So we're going to get two of them. Because there's 13 of us, so we can have a group of six bikes and a group of seven bikes chained together when we're on the car parks. But to be honest with you, most of the areas we're going to, we're not staying in Calais. Our first hotel is in boulogne sur mer But the rest of them, you know, we're kind of... We're out by the, the countrysides. The little cities and towns and the French countryside, so we're not... I'm not too worried about the bikes to be honest. I'm happy with them being locked up overnight. We've got all the car park on the, you know, secure car parking on the hotels. So I'm happy with the bikes being there. But yes, yeah, so I'm going to leave panniers on, top box is staying on. So all I'll have to carry is my tank bag, which will have everything in it, my money in that, and my two pannier bags. Everything else, I'm just going to leave it on the bike. Nice and simple. Easy peasy. I've done that before and I think when we did the Isle of Wight he's bloody lugging when we stayed in the travel lodges and that there when you're on the third floor you're trying to lug panniers and top boxes up there I know you've got a loft uh, a loft a lift but 
even that, just getting all that luggage through the hotel into the lift was a pain in the rectum, so I'm not going to bother. And you know, it's going to be July, we're heading towards southern France, so I imagine, I'm hoping the weather should be pretty good. So I'm only going to take my mesh jacket and a waterproof jacket. So if we are riding one day and it's a bit cold, I'll just put my waterproof jacket on. So I was thinking about do I take my Oxford jacket and and me mesh jacket, but uh, then again, you're overcomplicating it. If it's cold, I'll just put the waterproof on. If it rains, I'll put the waterproof on. If it's not, I'll just live in the mesh jacket. Obviously I'll take me some gloves. I will take my waterproof gloves just in case it does rain. And that's about it. Then speaking with space boys on about do I take my laptop with me to transfer the footage and that and I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to make sure I've got enough memory cards, memory card for each day and that's it. Each day I'll just get up, put a new memory card on the camera, regardless if there's, if there's any room left on that previous day. And I'll just have each day, I'll have its own card. It's just going to be easier to manage. Especially when I've got to gather everybody's memory cards or hard drives. I mean, if you want to put it on a hard drive, then fair enough, you do it. Well, I'm not going to be carrying laptops. I want to focus on the ride and enjoying the ride than the hustle and bustle of all the amount of stuff I've had to take with me. And I mean, that's what I did in Normandy. I mean, every night I was having copied everybody's memory cards and it was a nightmare. It was taking like four and a half, five hours of a night. So they more there enjoying themselves. I'm sat in the bedroom transferring memory cards. So, no, I'm not doing it. I'll worry about all of that when we get back. Well, I'm happy with my bike. I apologise for waffling on. I don't think I've even gone too further than two miles away from home, but... Sometimes it's a nice little void. It's enough. I mean, to be honest with you, around Birmingham, yeah. You ain't got much to look at. There's no great scenery. Apart from grey concrete and lots of traffic, them clouds are coming in at night. It did say about three o'clock it's going to hoof, and it's now eight minutes past three, so it's on its way. Yep, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the chain. I'm happy with the feel. I knew that. I was just going to try and come out. Let's just go one, one up here. Yeah, well, I've just got fears of um, when we was around Adam Valley, if I was using any engine brake, I was just going to imagine the chain was just going to snap. But now I'm happy, I'm feeling confident with the bike. And to be honest with you, it needs a proper clean. I know Jester, and I remember the bike doctor said he's going to give it a proper clean. She does need a proper clean, she really does. I think I'm a bit, bit, a bit more embarrassed to give it him, because when you see the condition of his VFR to mine, he's going to be thinking, what have you done with this? feels lovely. It does feel nice. I don't know if I've still got that, um, I don't know if I've still got squeaky noise. I don't know if you can hear it. Like I heard it then.
It's when I'm going over something. There, I can hear it. But I'm surprised. I'm surprised the microphone is on my helmet's picking that up. Unless it really is loud. I don't know what it could be. Is it fairing? I don't know. Right, I'm going home. I'm happy with the chain. I'm bored of talking now. I've probably bored you to death. Go and get the caravan tomorrow. Go and clean the caravan. We're going away with Viper for a couple of days camping. To Bridge North. And then to Shrew. Shrewsbury, I think it is. Now I need to keep it on this chain. I would imagine with it being new. I'd imagine it stretches quite a bit at the beginning. So I'd imagine I need to do more more maintenance while it's new. But it feels lovely. Yeah, it's like this. Little manoeuvres like this slow. This is where it'd be slapping and chugging along. Smooth, lovely, love it. This is Trent's favourite bit of road. This is where I take him on the back of the bike, but he keeps asking, "When can I go out properly? When can I go out properly?" But he's still not tall enough to fully reach the pegs. He's got he's on his tiptoes on the back peg, so he's too young. He's too small. I don't want to strap him to the bike or to me. He needs to be able to hold himself up. Yeah, that, that, that's looking like he's going to hoof it down soon. Right. Let's get her indoors. Let's have a look at that chain. I don't know what that squeaking is. It's like a chattering squeak. It's like Morse code. So look at my chair. Oh, look at this. I need to clean all this up. Oh, that feels lovely. Yeah, now I've got my degrees. I can clean all in here properly. Clean all this up where it's been removed and I've had my greasy hands all on it. Right, I'm going. See you on the next one, which I don't know when it will be. We've got nothing planned at the minute. The only thing planned we've got next is the France one, but... Oh, I think Noodles wants to meet up at some point at the Raven. Oh, James. Jester. I apologise now, mate, for the condition of her. She's going to need some work. Well, I'm going. Before the sun goes away and the rain comes to play. Laters, alligators. I want to think I've got a new. Piggy's done us a new metallic sticker because I've done us all our own individual logos. And I think Piggy's made them all because he's got like a sticker machine now. There, I can hear you chattering. I can't hear from where. I wonder if it's me. It might just be my key rings rattling. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing?